Hello everyone, I'm Joe with The Botch Pit. Today we're going to be going over a game that's a close personal favorite of mine. So gather up your cyberware and have your interfaces ready as we chip in for a beginner's guide to Cyberpunk Red. Cyberpunk Red was made by Mike Pondsmith and the crew over at R. Telsarian Games, who also happen to be the makers of the Witcher tabletop role-playing game. I kind of see a trend here. They make an amazing video game, they make an amazing RPG, and then they make an amazing cyberpunk upgrade and the video game comes out 14 years later. Designed originally in the late 80s, the first edition was made as a way to replicate the gritty realism of the 1980s cyber science fiction. As an interesting note, Walter John Williams' novel Hardwired and the movie Blade Runner were some of the key influences for the original game. Cyberpunk First Edition was published in 1988, with Cyberpunk 2020 and Cyberpunk V3 coming out in 1990 and 2005, respectively. Cyberpunk Red was released in November of 2020 and focuses predominantly on the timeline between 2023 and 2045, at the end of the Fourth Corporate War, which is effectively referred to as the Time of the Red. Speaking of the Time of the Red, so much crazy stuff went down before and during the war to get us to this point in the continuity. Worldwide conflicts, particles from orbital strikes descending on populated areas, scorched earth warfare, and the setting off of a dang old nuke in Night City, just to name a few, all of this contributed to the red hue that became perpetually visible in the sky. In fact, the sky stayed like that for two years and marks the start of the world's efforts at rebuilding after the war. More on that in future videos. Now, for those of you who are new to cyberpunk, corporate wars are a huge thing in the setting. Basically, it goes like this. Corporations amass enough money, power, and tech to basically circumvent the basic structure of law. They keep pushing the limits and bending the rules until their machinations essentially become the law of the land. Not only does this set the stage for civil discontent and uprisings, but it openly encourages other major corporate players to flex their economic might, which ultimately spirals into conflict. The citizens of the populated area watch the corpo fat cats live a life much easier than theirs. Well, about as easy as a life as one can have in the time of the red, but life's hard for sure. Food shortages, poor access to essential resources, trade routes being blocked by angry highway barbarians. Oh, and the flippin' internet's out and it's a piece of junk, big oof. Whether it's corpos versus corpos or people versus corpos, there are always three constants. Someone is going to get hurt real bad like. Information is just as useful as any shotgun and if you have enough money, people, and tech, you win the fight. Technology is in a weird state in red. Cyberware is defined as a cybernetic augmentation of existing or missing human components. Even though the net as we know it is less accessible due to corrupted data, entire databases being utterly destroyed, oh and real freaking wild digital demon viruses that could frag your brain in real life, people are still able to interact with closed loop networks via cybernetic interfaces. These interfaces are hardwired into the human brain. That's right. Optic enhancements, weaponized limbs, Hair that has nanofibers that change color with a thought are all commonplace in the Red Universe. Those people who embrace the upgrade lifestyle are called cyberpunks. Just be sure you don't jack more parts into your meat than your mind can handle. Those who lose too much of their empathy risk cyberpsychosis and going on a murder spree. As you could imagine, global conflicts and corporate scheming does not lend itself to things like food production, agricultural logistics, and basic sanitation services that are easily accessible to everyone. Because of this, you get this interesting clash of rebuilding cities. Some areas have a bit more technology and have pseudo-thriving corporate hubs. All of this is juxtaposed against nomadic wastelands with a serious scarcity problem just outside the city limits. But the good news is, the world is rebuilding, slowly and getting better every day. To put it simple, in a world like this, you live by four rules. One, style over substance. Even if you botch the job, act like you planned it that way. Two, attitude is everything. Never walk into a room when you can stride in like you own the place and never ever look back at the explosion. Three, live on the edge. Take bigger risks, drive faster cars. Do the thing no one else can do. Four, break all the rules. If this game was any edgier, you would need a safety briefing to play it. Player characters. Let's talk a little bit about player characters. The world of cyberpunk is some of the grittiest and heavily stylized personalities in any dystopian landscape. When making your character, you get three decent ways to get your PC into the game. Firstly, they have some awesome templates that you can easily apply to any of the roles if you just want to pick one up and start playing right away. Secondly, there is a system of charts that allows you to roll dice to decide what stats, backgrounds, goals, and relationships you might have. 
Lastly, there's a point buy system for those who really want to min-max their characters for gameplay. I personally enjoy the second method of character creation. You get to roll a dice and still get some randomized stats. It's like gambling on whether or not you're going to be a good net runner or be able to shoot somebody, but not having to think too hard on the character because you arrive 20 minutes late to the session. It's 100% a procrastinator's best friend. After you select your role and nail down your attributes, you get your skills allocated, pick out your style and gear, and iron out your backgrounds. The entire process can take five minutes or about an hour depending on which method you take. So it's about this time you're probably wondering how you're going to fit into the world of red. What role will you play? Well, with 10 options to choose from, there's no easy answer for sure. The roles break down as follows. Rocker boys, solos, net runners, techs, med techs, medias, execs, lawmen, fixers, and nomads. Let's take a second to define each one of them a little. Rocker boy. Rocker boys are your charismatic, cool bard type. They have abilities that influence others to fight for a cause or use their larger than life personalities to get your team into hard to access clubs or high profile events. Ever at the front of social movements and rebellions, rocker boys give the fight authority a new lease on life in the time of red. If you like crass charisma, rock and roll, and want to channel your inner Johnny Silverhand, rocker boys offer you solos. Solos are the resident badasses of the cyberpunk world. Ex-militants, mercs, assassins for hire, and some of the hardest fighters in Night City make up the ranks of this role. Solos fit in any level of society. Hyper elite bodyguards for corpos or street thugs in service to a fixer. These guys aren't much for social etiquette and are usually the ones to sport some of the heavier weaponry in the game. If the sound of gunshots makes you moist, solos bro, try it out. Netrunners. Netrunners use the interfaces mentioned earlier to masterfully hack any system they can get their hands on. Handy with a shotgun and armored more than your average person, these guys move their way through meat space to find their next place to chip in. Don't let that fool you though, these guys aren't your average net jockey. Cyberspace is a dangerous place with all the hellhound viruses running around. If you want to hack the system to supply your team with valuable digital knowledge while avoiding the dangers of deadly viruses designed to fry your brain, then the Netrunner might be for you. Tex. In a world full of machines, these guys are the mechanics. You've always got two screwdrivers and a wrench in your pocket ready to go. You make your living building, fixing, and modifying tech, a crucial occupation in the technological world recovering from a war that broke the back of the supply chain. If fixing literally everything in the world of red sounds like your cup of tea, try the tech out. Medtechs. Medtechs are the ones you need to call on if your cyberware blue screens or your meaty bits start to malfunction. One part organic mechanic and one part tech support, these guys bridge the gap between traditional medics and those who know how to service malfunctioning cyberware. 100% helpful and 100% unsanctioned, actual holders of medical licenses need not apply. That's not to say every med tech is a hack. Some of them make a decent living in the trauma teams. If keeping your team upright and fighting is more important to you than anything, med tech is the way to go. Medias. Medias put investigative journalism into an entirely new light. Medias were responsible for showing the true nature of the corpos after the fourth corporate war. Though now operating in a less technologically savvy environment, medias use their press pass and vid links to full effect. They're the best at digging deep into the shady business dealings of corrupt officials, then feeding the information to the masses. Whether you're a social media influencer or a hardline nightly reporter, you're willing to risk everything to get the truth out there and soak up all the glory that comes with it. If you like digging up dirt on your local crooked authority figure, you might be a good fit for the medias. Execs. Remember earlier when I mentioned corpo influences and how the power hungry corporations were highly responsible for a lot of the bad stuff going on in the red storyline? Well, how would you like to play as one? Maybe you're a junior exec trying to make a name for yourself in an environment where people literally kill to climb the corporate ladder. Maybe you have a kind heart and endure the rat races in hopes of starting your own corporation someday that helps the common man get ahead in life. Either way, execs are the ones you play when you want to be a power broker defending the corpo agenda or exposing it. Lawman. Lawmen are the police force responsible for patrolling the streets and psychopath-filled highways in and beyond the city limits. Lawmen get the short end of the stick in the cyberpunk landscape. You see, new combat drugs, high-tech weapons, and gangs crawling out of the woodwork have made it an incredibly difficult job to keep the streets safe and clean. Luckily, you have high-caliber ammunition. 
good thing too. Part of the lawman's job is hunting down cyberpunks who have lost too much of their humanity and end up suffering from cyberpsychosis. Imagine this, you're on your shift and you get a call that a heavily augmented attacker is mantis clawing a club to pieces and you're the closest guy. If keeping the peace and administering justice in the world with nightly gunfights and cyber killing machines sounds fun, join the lawman, fixers. Fixers are the deal makers and information brokers of the streets. If you're looking for a job or a hard to find item, it's usually the fixers who have the connections to find the things you're looking for. Handy with a gun, but far more adequate at getting those around them to do the work for them, the fixer is one part charisma and one part mob boss. You broker skills and pimp out high-end solos for hire. But it's not all hired muscle either. If people need housing or food, medical supplies, or to get the heat off of them for a little while and lay low, it's the fixer who makes it happen. If playing a cross between Robin Hood and Al Capone gets you up in the morning, then step into the shoes of a fixer and let's make some money. Nomads. So when the corpos started moving in on the territories and displacing people, a lot of folks hit the highways to try and survive. Over the years, these people have developed a highly successful trade and travel route system and have become adept at surviving the harsh wastelands beyond the city limits. Want to be a wheelman? Maybe a road warrior street pirate lifestyle is calling your name. Nomads embody the survivalist spirit in the time of the Red and are a pivotal force in the rebuilding of society. Highly connected to distant family members across the dangerous highways, it's the nomads who truly run the wastelands beyond the city gates. If you're looking to be a smuggler or rep a Mad Max style cyber survivalist, the nomads are calling your name. Each of the roles come with a specific ability that lends itself to a playstyle that defines their archetype. Roles aren't an action that you do, but what defines you as a person in the world of Cyberpunk Red. That being said, there's nothing stopping you from trying out other roles as you progress through your games. You might start out as a solo, battle-hardened veteran of the Fourth Corporate War who takes to social media to influence others to stand up for their rights and fight the corporate power. Before you know it, people have forgotten about your job as a solo and are embracing you as the new media presence. So long as you are rank 4 in your current role and you have enough IP improvement points to buy rank 1 in another role, you can switch out to a new role. You still have access to both role abilities, but everyone in the streets will know you by your new role specifically. If you then choose to change your role again, you simply get to rank 4 in your current role and use IP to change roles once you have enough to buy rank 1. It's pretty straightforward. On a personal note, I like to let players reclass so long as it makes sense. A rank 9 rocker boy with a cult-like following more than likely wouldn't drop everything to go out and become a med tech, especially with the charismatic role ability that allows you to have a massive influence over groupies and gives you the ability to have people commit acts on your behalf. With that kind of combination madness, you could become a doctor who gets his nurses to euthanize patients with his personality alone. I might be onto something here. Analysis. Cyberpunk sits at the head of the table as the new and shiny dystopian future offering for sci-fi role-playing enthusiasts. The cyberpunk world we all know and love opened up the pages to the timeline leading up to the highly anticipated video game that comes out on December 10th, 2020. I absolutely love this game. It's a wonderful addition to the cyberpunk continuity, and I can't wait to get more games in with the Botch Boys. Everything from the cover mechanic to the dice rolling system to the gritty streets of Night City scream of a post-collapse world that's waiting for your influences. If you're on the fence and you want to check out Cyberpunk Red's core, I highly recommend this book. If you're kind of wondering if it's for you or not, they actually offer a jumpstart kit that comes with some cardboard miniatures, a few small maps, and two rulebooks to get you started. Check below for links to the core rulebook and the jumpstart kit. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button for more Cyberpunk Red overviews and play sessions. This is Jura with the Botch Pit, and thanks for chipping in. Oh, and don't think I forgot. A special thank you to Mapmaker Sona and Dan McCoy for helping me with all the editing. I am really terrible at spelling and sentence structure. And a very special thank you to Brennan Paluka for all the help with the audio and visual, especially with the lighting, because I can't hold lights and record at the same time. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. We're testing. Hello, everyone. Yo, you shut up. <laughs> I'm fucking dying. <laughs>
Rules aren't an action. <laughs> sensual water. Am I being sensual to water? Is that... It's not bad. No? I just go, it's all over my beard. The sore part about having a beard is like everything gets in it. 